In today's world of evolved goods and services, we find ourselves as consumers with many options at our disposal. We have a variety of goods to choose from. The latest models of digital cameras, mobile phones and televisions made by the leading manufacturers of the world are within our reach. And not just that, but every season, new models of automobiles can be seen on the Indian roads. And gone are the days when the Ambassador and the Fiat were the only two car options that were used in India. Today, Indians are buying cars that are produced by nearly all the top companies and brands in the world. And this brand explosion is not just limited to cars. A similar explosion can be seen in many other goods. From shirts to televisions to processed fruit juices, we're spoiled for choices. But remember that such wide-ranging choice of goods in our markets is a relatively recent phenomenon. These varied goods and services weren't available in the Indian markets two decades ago. So you see, in a matter of years, our markets have been transformed. So how do we begin to understand these rapid transformations? Or what are the factors that are bringing about these changes? And how are these changes affecting the lives of the people? Well, this is what we will learn in the chapter, Globalization and the Indian Economy. Now, if we go back to the 20th century, precisely until the middle of 20th century, we will find that all phases of production were organized within the countries. So if something was to be made, then everything starting from the first process to the end stage was carried out within the country. And what crossed the boundaries of these countries were the raw materials, the foodstuff and the finished products. Like colonies such as India exported the raw material and foodstuff and imported the finished goods. So you see it was the trade that was the main channel connecting many distant countries together. But it was before the large companies called MNCs which stands for multinational corporations emerged on the scene. Their basic strategy is to set up offices and factories for production in regions where they can get cheap labor and resources. This is done so that the cost of production is low and the MNCs can earn greater profits. So how does a single MNC decide to spread their process of production or more importantly, how do they interlink production across countries? See, MNCs generally set up production in places close to the markets where there are skilled and unskilled labor available at low cost. Apart from these, the place must also have the other factors of production available. Now, so far we have discussed how trade happened before the arrival of MNCs and how trade happens in the course of their arrival. We also discussed how the MNCs are responsible for the interlinking of production across countries. We also discussed how foreign trade leads to the integration of markets globally and what effects it has. Now, after discussing these aspects, we have come to the question, what is globalization? We know that MNCs are more recent occurrence. And since the past two or three decades, more and more MNCs have been looking for locations around the world that can act as cheaper alternative to their production. We also know that the investment made by the MNCs is known as a foreign investment. And since the past two or three decades, Foreign investments by MNCs in developing countries has been rising. And at the same time, foreign trade between countries has also been rising rapidly. In fact, a large part of the foreign trade is controlled by the MNCs. Now, just like India, all the developed countries during the early stages of development have given protection to the domestic producers through a variety of means. But situations don't always remain the same. As starting around 1991, some broad changes in the policies were made in India. And the government decided that the time had come for the Indian producers to compete with the producers around the globe. It was felt that the competition would improve the performance of producers within the country, since competition results in the improvement of quality. And this decision was also supported by the powerful international organizations. And these decisions were what led to the removal of barriers on foreign trade and foreign investment to a large extent. So you know what that means, right? This means the goods could be imported and exported easily, and also foreign companies could set up factories and offices here in our country. Tutomate, 
For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on Apple App Store or Google Play Store.